I want to talk about Flashpoint, y'all, and I'm going to be full transparency. I am not super familiar with every single nook and cranny of all of these maps. We're going to learn every single nook and cranny as we go through it. Um, however, I do know a decent amount about all the maps, and more than that, I also know how to play the game mode. So we're going to talk about how to play the game mode, and then we're going to talk about some, like our other map guides, we're going to talk about some of the important positions to know on each point. Key things with Flashpoint. It is just plain old Overwatch with only a few adjustments. If I had a dime for every single time somebody asked me, how do I play Flashpoint? How do I play Flashpoint? I'd have a lot of dimes. The key thing with Flashpoint is there isn't really any major differences between this and other normal game modes. There's only slight differences. In fact, I find push generally to have more dramatic playstyle adjustments for that game mode than, than even Flashpoint. Um, the main takeaways with Flashpoint, the point ticks faster, so there are fewer fights on each point, which means generally uh, when the, if, you, if, if the, like we're reaching like 85, 70, 90%, 95%, and you're not sure if you're going to be able to touch in time, it's generally okay to just take the L. I think compared to King of the Hill, where there's more opportunity to touch and there's fewer rounds, it's less important to touch if you don't think that you're going to be able to win the fight. So the key thing with Flashpoint is, do we fight for the objective or do we just go to the next point, right? If you have time to touch and you can take a good fight, then fight. If you don't have time, then just take the L, go to the next point. The other thing that's unique about Flashpoint is that the time to unlock is uh, not spent in between rounds. In other words, when you're rolling out on King of the Hill, you're rolling out from spawn, right? But usually in Flashpoint, you might choose to not take a fight on this point. Like, let's say you've lost this. You're like, okay, we're not going to touch this 95%. Let's go to next point. And then the point over here unlocks. This is where the crucial thing, the crucial decision of deciding whether you're going to fight along the way or whether you're going to fight and rotate the point immediately matters. Now, here's the thing. You need to pay attention. If you're playing in ranked, you need to pay attention to what your teammates are doing. If your teammates are rotating to point and they see enemies along the way, you need to fight with them. You need to fight with the majority of your team. If your team is rotated all the way to point and you see your team is on point, then you need to go to point. You need to go to point and don't fight them along the rotation. The key thing to note, though, is if you were in a team environment and you could choose to fight them on the way or if you could choose to fight them on point, that's where the map knowledge is really, really important. Because if, let's say, I'm playing a Widowmaker composition on Flashpoint, right, or an Ash composition on Flashpoint, and we're rotating... Do we really want to fight here? If I see the enemy team here, do I really want to meet them here or do I want to try and rotate to this point? I mean, what do you guys think, right? I think the answer is pretty obvious, right? The point has much better positions and sight lines that favor my composition, so I want to fight in point if I'm playing snipers, right? But if I'm playing something that can benefit from close quarters combat, uh, streets combat, then I want to fight here. I don't want to necessarily have to, I don't necessarily have to fight here. The other thing to keep in mind as well is like, let's say I have a bunch of ultimates that I want to use. I could take a fight early before the enemy team gets their ultimates. And yes, the maps are randomly generated in terms of the points around. It's always the one in the center and then it goes around the map randomly. So key thing to keep in mind is there will be times where people will want to fight on the way to point. You need to be okay with that if that's what your teammates are doing. And you also need to be paying attention to if you're in an organized team environment about what the point favors. This is a more sniper-oriented point. This one is more 50-50, and there's going to be other points around that to keep in mind. So overall flash point, um, pay attention to what the map favors, pay attention to your teammates, and crucially decide about whether you're going to fight and try to contest or whether you give up and you play for the next one. The other thing to note with Flashpoint, which is unique to King of the Hill, is that the respawns do shift. So if there are is the point in the middle, if the point is far, or if the point is close, the respawns will shift. I believe this is a respawn on far points. So if the point is close, then you're going to get the respawn here. If the respawn at the point is far, then you're going to get the respawn here. And the same is mirrored on the other side. The reason why that is close is it's important when you're doing these in-between fights that you pay attention to the respawn indicator on your screen. Uh, that respawn indicator will tell you how close you are to the enemy respawn because I cannot tell you how many times I've tried to fight enemies as like a Sombra, right? 
and the respawn, the point was unlocked way over there. So I'm fighting here thinking that their spawn is way over there. Turns out the spawn is right here and I get killed by sometimes spawn. Sometimes they spawn right next to you, right? So you need to pay attention because the spawn is not random. It is where the point is. If the point's far, the spawn comes close. If the point is close to them, the respawn's further, the initial respawn. Does that make sense? So you need to pay very close attention to that if you're going for these spawn camps or these flanks or things like that. They will, they will contest you. The point is random, but you'll be able to see what point is unlocked. For example, if I'm playing Spawnbra and I want to spawn camp somebody that's coming back from spawn, and this point in the back right or this point far in the back left unlocks, this respawn is now available. So if I try to spawn camp somebody over here, right, that's come back from spawn, and then somebody just respawns here, I need to know that. I need to know that. Um, the other thing to keep in mind, and the reason why that respawn is very important, is because if you get a bad respawn, like let's say that you died late and then the point is unlocked in the far left or the far right, you need to press your interact key and you will instantly teleport. It's the new respawn system, right? It's, you will instantly teleport ahead. It saves you a lot of time running back from respawn. Um, I wish <laughs> I wish I could do the same thing when it spawns you in the very back. Like how many times have you guys spawned like back here as a Zenyatta and you're like, oh no, it's gonna take me six years to get to point. But at least if the point shifts, you can teleport to the other respawn. In fact, there is also a very, like let's say you're starting to come back from spawn and then the, the point flips. It's literally a good idea sometimes to run back to spawn, press your interact key, so that instead of having to run all the way, you actually just jump forward all the way up to here. Um, so it saves you some time. Since you can't see the next point before the current one is capped, if you don't want to contest at, say, 95%, it's fine to walk back to spawn if you're close to spawn. If you're close to spawn. If I, we're going to lose this fight here, I'm obviously not going to walk back to spawn. I'm going to sit right here. And I'm going to wait and see which one's unlocked. And they go, okay, group up with my team as best as I can and rotate towards that point. Now, let's, uh, I think that's mostly it in terms of Flashpoint unique things. It's the spawn game is probably the most important thing to know. And knowing is the fight lost? Okay, it's not worth recontesting. Go next. I think that's really the only, like people think about Flashpoint like there's this crazy complicated new game mode. It's not. The spawn thing is a little bit weird. The random point thing is a little weird, but it doesn't really change how you play all that much. Um, old economy stuff. Um, no, I don't, I don't think it's really unique. I don't think it's really unique. I, I think like, obviously like if you were to, you always need to think a step ahead, right? Like if you, if you, if sometimes if you're like, Hey, do we want to dump all of our ultimates to recontest a point that's already lost? Then that means that you're going to have struggles the rest of the game, but I don't think it's a unique flashpoint. How much faster does the percentage increase? I want to say it's twice as fast, but I might be wrong. I think Flashpoint compared to King of the Hill, I think it's twice as fast. Right. You, you Most of the time, let's say if you win first fight on Flashpoint, you at most have to win two more fights before you cap. But depending on the composition, you might only have to win one more fight. Usually you will only get like two fights is 100%. So like let's say you win one fight, they come back, they beat you in the fight and they cap and you come back and you win again. You, you might just win it right there or they have one more weekend test, but it, it, it depends. I guess the only other little niche detail I could say is because we've already pointed out that certain points favor certain compositions. Uh, if you want to talk about like advanced team play stuff when there's like coordination and stuff, you might look at an ultimate point like this playing a Widowmaker comp or, you know, and be like, you know, we're not going to likely win this here. So we're not going to use our ults. We're instead going to wait for this point to unlock because that's the last point that we need to win. And certain points favor certain compositions. So there's strategy in terms of like saving ultimates for you to get your fight. I, you would always, almost always play for your ultimates. Very rarely is swapping for old economy totally worth it. Um, usually play for your ultimates first. So let's actually talk about the points themselves. And this is going to be the little bit of the slower part because I'm going to need to do a little bit of exploring. Most people are going to roll out here uh, on the first point. So this one is going to provide some brawl options. Uh, it's going to provide some spam options. I think in general, if you're playing more ranged characters, it's important to leverage this angle here or this angle here to create some distance. Otherwise, you'll get stuck shooting in main or shooting at a shield or get spammed out really easily. So I really, really, really like taking this longer angle for longer range characters, even sometimes supports. I also think for shorter range characters like Genji's Tracer, Sombra's uh, Wrecking Balls, and so on, uh, even Reapers, this is a good angle to take as well. The key thing to notice is that there's a dearth of available health packs that aren't minis. Even the minis are a little bit few and far between in this map. I don't know if this was a design issue to prevent flankers from being too oppressive, but there aren't as many health packs available. Um, 
I think that we can talk about the health packs. We're going to talk about the one that is underneath, I believe. Let's actually do a little bit of digging here. Yeah, so there's a mini health pack that's mirrored on both sides here, but there aren't as many. They're just, they aren't as available and they aren't as accessible. So you're going to have to be a little bit more disciplined with how you play as a flanker because it is harder to find that sustain. Now, there is a health pack back here, a mini health pack over here, and there's even a mega way over here. Um, but in general, when you're playing around this point, um, take the longer angles if you're a longer character. If you're playing a shorter sightline character, you want to leverage this side of the map here. This is also fairly useful for vertical characters. Uh, if you're playing a pocketed character like an Echo and Ash, um, if you're playing a Genji, this is pretty good as well. Even Diva can kind of function on this high ground here. But yeah, a lot of fights are going to happen around here. Now, I do not recommend rotating the point here unless you absolutely have to, or if the fight's already won. The person that the person that generally the team that generally rotates the point first is usually the team that ends up getting spammed out. As you can kind of see here, it is pretty naked. It, you are kind of out in the open. Uh, thankfully, there's a nice little robot here to hide from, but you got to be really careful about rotating the point because you are going to be out in the open and getting spammed from multiple different angles. So, um, you know, putting one person on a point to cap it is, is okay, uh, especially if the fight is basically one or already one, but you need to be really, really cautious on this point about putting these people on point. Now, flankers, we talked about right, we talked about left. You can also wrap around from underneath here. This is the separate left path. Uh, so if most people go here, if you go here, you can not only wrap around a point this way, but you can actually wrap immediately all the way around here and they won't even see you. So something about that. Um, and then in addition, obviously, you, if you're thinking like one crazy flank, wrecking ball, whatever, you can also wrap around to their side too. Um, are we only looking at New Junk City? No, we're gonna be looking at Suravasa as well. So uh, something to keep in mind, both flank angles are available. Uh, there is a high ground that wraps all the way around here and there's a nunny, another mini health pack on this side here. So again, if you're using this flank here, this mini health pack is really good. Um, but like I said, those options are a little bit more limited. And so that's the first point. This will always be the first point in this map. Um, yeah, let's keep going here. So we're going to go from left to right here. So I'm going to kind of just show like the crucial things along the rotation. I'm not going to tell you like every little detail because most fights are not going to break out in here. But it is important to know there is a mega health pack here. There aren't very many mega health packs in this mode, uh, especially on the in the middle of the map. Usually the, the, the health packs are on the periphery, on the outside of the map. This is one of the really important ones. In addition to that, there's one right here. So really a lot of the really important health packs, mega health packs are all kind of in the same spot. There's a mini here and there's a mega there. Kind of worth pointing out. It's not actually mirrored. It's not mirrored. So you need to know that. Uh, in addition to that, you can utilize this staircase and there is a mega here. But crucially, if you're a flanker, most teams coming from this way will rotate underneath you. So you can actually set up and hide up in here, play around the health pack in here, and you get a perfect angle to attack them, whether they rotate far left, whether they rotate to close left, or whether they rotate right. All right, so let's talk about this point right here. Um, I guess we could quickly show the, the rotation on the other side as well. It's very similar. Um, this room is honestly pretty much negligible. This is the, the, the new spawn room. If they're gonna, and then keep in mind, if that back left is unlocked, this is going to be the spawn room, right? Uh, mega health back here. Rotation to staircase here. It's the same kind of thing over here. Uh, Mega health pack here. High ground, again, mirrored to mega health pack here. Um, pretty much the same thing if you're looking to spawn camp. This is going to be a really good spot for you. I don't believe there is a mini. Okay, yes, there's a mega here. I didn't think there was a mini. There's a mega here as well. So there's, again, a lot of megas in this general vicinity of the map. It's like the transition points is where a lot of the megas are on this map. There's also a mini health pack under here, worth pointing out. Okay, so mini health pack. Uh, we get a few more health packs that are available here. Now, this is the really, really, really important thing. So this one, the point is actually underneath the high ground. Uh, I think this it's really easy to get these two confused here, but the point is underneath the high ground here. So you really, again, like the previous point, only want to touch this when you absolutely have to. The nice thing about this one is this one has a little bit more cover, so it's a little bit easier to hide from underneath the high ground. So it's important here to try and clear the high ground and fight for the high ground if you can, but it's not the end of the world, especially if you're playing like a tracer, for you to go underneath and try to pressure the point to pull them to, to drop from the high ground. So uh, this staircase, there's going to be a mirror staircase on both sides. This goes to the high ground. Crucially, there is a mini health pack right here, uh, not mega, mini health pack. And this also transitions the point as well. But the key thing here is that you actually have a pretty decent space. It's not as choky uh, to fight from on this side. Again, this side has the exact same thing, mirrored staircase. Now, the key thing here is... How do you approach the high ground? How do you approach the high ground? Some people are going to want to rotate up top here. This one, 
is actually a little bit imbalanced, I find, um, because if you approach from this choke here, it's really easy to get spammed out. So I find most of the time, if you have the time to rotate, you actually want to go far right because it's harder for them to actually fight. It's, this rotation, this choke is a lot less punishing than this awkward upstairs staircase where there's no cover. Um, now, keep in mind, you can also jump up on these boxes. Uh, any character, tank or support, can make that jump. Uh, and then the other side has other options as well. The problem with the other side is it's it's also uphill at points in time. So it can be very ugly if you get caught out here. Uh, but yeah, you can you can fight here as well. Uh, I think, again, most of the time when you're playing Flashpoint, you're gonna have, if you're playing with a flanker, if you're playing with a DPS or a support that's going to be taking an angle, you are going to have people that are going to be coming out from this angle while you're coming out from there. I generally like defenders most of the time to kind of control the high ground as best as you can and scout where the enemy team is pathing and try to meet them where they are. Unless you're playing like a ranged spam comp, it's good to try to choke them out of like the door frames. Don't push inside here, but try to make it painful for them to walk out of here. Try to make it painful for them to walk up here. Try to make it painful for them to walk out of here, or even worse if they go up the staircase here. Um, but you don't want to push through into the choke. So the, it, the unique thing about Flashpoint is when you control the point, a lot of the time you fight on the point. Um, that isn't always the case in King of the Hill. A lot of time in King of the Hill, you fight off of the point here. But generally in Flashpoint, you generally fight generally in the vicinity of the point because the point areas are generally pretty good defensible locations. That's pretty much it for here. There's this pathway underneath here, but there's not a whole lot that's that's we haven't already gone over. Uh, yeah, that's mostly it. Uh, oh, I guess, yeah, mini health back here. More you know. I believe there should be one mirrored on the other side. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, yeah there's one there as well. So what I'm learning is there's more health packs than you think, but it's, they're just hard to find. Okay, next point, back left here. Same kind of thing where the external rotation gives you a di direct access to high ground, right? Um, whereas the internal rotation is a little bit tricky. The difference between the two is I actually think that this choke is pretty bad too. Whereas when we talked about going far, gives you like, oh, it's a, it's a decent option, right? This one, this is still a nasty choke. So I, I, I think regardless of how you approach this one, this one's always going to be hard. It is worth noting that there is a mega on the periphery here. And that, again, you can go access underneath from here. The problem with this point, though, is that the point is not underneath. The point is on top here. So you do need to assault the top at some point, no pun intended. Um, so Mega here, again, it's mirrored on both sides. This one is pretty nasty choke on both sides. Uh, so generally what people will do is they, a lot of times people will attack from this side. Now, this is not optimal either, but it's a little bit of a wider choke. So um, point... Uh, yeah, I think that's mostly it. So, key thing to note here, oopsies, is this hallway is a connector to both where you'd attack from main and right. So you can actually push from one direction and have at the same time very quickly an off angle here. I like this a lot. Obviously, there's no health packs around, which is kind of sucky, but that is just the nature of the point, and that is also going to be mirrored on the other side. So again, here a bit of an off angle that you can assault from on either side. Uh, this one is pretty ugly. Yeah, I agree. Uh, defenders, I think fighting on point, again, is fine. You can hold this choke. You can hold the staircase. You can hold here. You don't even necessarily need to meet them here because every rotation they do from here to point feels really, really bad. It is worth knowing there's a mini here that's going to be mirrored on the other side. Uh, but it, it's basically another situation where you just you just hold point, you hold corner, you try to find some form of cover, and you make the enemy team come at you. Uh, in terms of health packs, same kind of thing. There's going to be a mega health pack over here. There's also going to be a high ground that goes over. Again, you guys are noticing here, and a mini. It's basically the same thing as the previous section, where there's a mega tunnel with a mini underneath. Um, and then if you dig even deeper here, again, there's another mega here. And this is going to be the far respawn for the opposite side. Uh, and then this is going to be the... For a forward respawn for the opposite side. So keep in mind if you're looking to spawn camp anybody, and then you know the point flips to the far one, this is going to be their respawn there. Um, that's mostly it for this here. I think there's the mega here. We've already talked a little bit about that. Um, yeah, this is this is a tough one. Okay, uh, let's move to the other side. Bridge here, <clears throat> uh, not super useful. It is no, nice to know that there's a mini there. Uh, uh, again, this area, not super, super useful. Mini here. And let's go to the back one. Okay, so this one is a bit weird. Let's just talk about the point first. So the point is a really weird combo of, uh, it's, a, it's a hybrid of, of a really like a brawl and spam. Very open, very tight at the same time. The point itself is very open, but 
approaching the point there are a lot of tight chokes. This is a big tight choke here. Uh, this is a tight choke here. This is a tight choke here. Pr fairly tight choke here. Um, fairly tight choke here. This is probably the tightest choke right around here. Um, so if you're defending, you can actually choose to not fight on point here. This is one of the, I think the, the, if we're looking this direction, the left side, uh, the left two points here, this point and the one we'll do after this are the ones where it's not, it's okay to not fight on point given where you're choosing uh, to, to fight. So, because I think that um, the point has a little bit less of a defender's advantage. So if you want to hold up and stuff somebody here, or if you want to hold up and stuff somebody here, that, that can work pretty well here, more so than with the other points. Now, approaching this point, worth to note a couple of things. There are approaches from the spawn side on either side. You can take the mega here. This is a decent angle here. This staircase is not really used all that often. Um, it is something that you can access from either spawn side. Uh, the reason why it's not super relevant is because it just doesn't have very good sight lines on the point. It's a slightly faster pathing route uh, for flankers in some circumstances, but very rarely will you find the need to use this. Mini health back here. Now, this one is a little bit more important to note. This is actually like a deep flank that connects with this thing here. There is a mini health back here. And if you're trying to break the choke here and you're getting stuff at the choke, this is going to be your off angle to do so. Now, this stupid wall is going to get in the way. Uh, I actually think that's kind of a big deal. Um, but it is something that is available to you. Uh, there's also the backside of point, which is not super relevant. The only reason it's relevant is because, again, mini health back. And it's cover that allows you to flip-flop to the other side. Um, not something you're going to be using a lot if you're not a flanker, but it's worth pointing out. And again, the same thing is mirrored on the opposite side where it's a mini health back and two alternate flank routes for breaking that choke. So again, if you're being held at the choke here and you're trying to break the choke as an attacker, you can wrap around this side, use this mini health back, and again, <laughs> stupid wall. Um, yeah, that's mostly it. Do you think holding high ground when defending is better than holding them at the choke? Um, no, I don't think it really matters that much because the high ground isn't going to be super, super relevant to the point. It's too easy for them to hide from the high ground, right? So I think at that point, you're better off just fighting on the point um, or holding them at the choke, one or the other. Okay, uh, last point. Last point. Again, mini rotation. Uh, I'm going to be moving to the next thing here. And this thing is, is the same thing where it's like this choke is pretty brutal, but there's always a flank to break it, right? And you notice that this is kind of mirrored for both sides. You can use this flank to break this side. You can use this flank to break this side. It's the same thing. Um, the only difference between these two here, I find, is that this transition to point is really awkward. Like this choke is a little bit nastier than the previous one, uh, where like this awkward rotation here, and this is an awkward rotation in here. The other major difference, which is a good thing though, is that this high ground is a lot more relevant. Um, you could do a lot more with this high ground than you could on the previous one because you have better sight lines here. But that also goes for the defenders on point. For this one, the point is just this big yellow thing here. Uh, and But this high ground is actually fairly relevant. I see a lot of people staying out in the open this high ground. Be careful with that. You want to try and hold cover or corner. And then try to use, uh, try to not be on point if you don't have to be. Because uh, point here is unlike many of the other previous points, um, even the last one to an extent, doesn't really have an advantage. There's high ground here, there's angles here, there's high ground here. So you only want to be on point on this point if you, unless you, if you absolutely have to. Uh, some of, the, some of the points in this map are good to hold points. Some of them are not. This is one of the ones where I don't think it's great to hold on point. Uh, keep in mind, this back rotation has a mini health pack. You can wrap all the way around behind. This flank also will have the mini health pack. Um, this will allow you to get onto this point. Uh, chokes here are nasty. And this is one of the times where using the choke rotation or breaking the choke rotation isn't necessary because you can go through here, which has a mini health pack, and you can either rotate directly to point, you could break the choke this way, or you can even go to high ground. Uh, and take, look to rotate the point that way. And that's something that I think a lot of teams could benefit from. Um, that's mostly it here, really. Any questions? You think heroes that lack mobility suffer in this map? Yes and no. Because heroes that lack mobility generally have better poke or better range. And I do think poke is a little bit stronger in this map. Flashpoint will always favor mobility. Always. But this is the less mobile favored of the points, I think. I think poke is not, I don't know if poke is best for this one, but it is certainly more a viable option than it is for Suravasa. Suravasa, start in the spawn here. You're going to go out this way. You're going to cut this way, and you're going to cut this way. Most comps generally want to fight here. If you are playing a spammier comp with more range, now obviously, in this, this is in ranked, it's probably not going to apply because people are just going to roll out here anyway. But if you're in a coordinated team environment, I like rotating to here instead, going out the left door or the right if you're coming from the opposite spawn and rotating to here. 
This has a lot more sight lines, more open space, and you don't get your teeth kicked in by a Reinhardt Lucio composition rotating here. Again, this is a point where people are going to be either rotating right or rotating left, generally in fighting here. If you are a flanker, it's very similar to the previous point, where uh, pre, uh, New Jung City, where a lot of teams will fight here. If you're spammer, you'll go over there. If you're a flank here, you'll go over here. Because mini health pack here, but crucially, mega health pack here. And if you're a super juicy flanker, you got a mini health pack in their own backline and a mega health pack in their spawn. Not to mention that's mirrored on the opposite side. So mega, mini, mega. This one's a little bit more out of the way. Point is okay to fight from. There is some cover. The high grounds little here are pretty useful for certain characters. Ashes, Sojourns, Kirikos, Baptiste, and so on. But it can be a little bit awkward. Uh, also keep in mind there is a mega underneath this so that you can utilize. Also please keep in mind that if you're holding this high ground, there is nothing stopping flankers from wrapping around and catching you here. Now this is a little bit worse for flankers to get to you though, because it's more open. And in addition, there's only really this mega and the mega underneath. Um, there aren't as many health pack opportunities. Uh, in fact, if I dig around, this mini is over here, good to know. But this one is, is not quite as friendly to, for flankers to reach you. This staircase is good to know because it does jack all. Okay, just so we're clear on that. Um, very good to know that one. And also, this staircase as well is really, really important because it, I mean, I guess it's a shortcut. Yeah, I mean, that, that one's maybe kind of relevant. Um, but yeah. Okay, so this one, you're going to go to point, you're going to fight on point, uh, you're going to fight either far if you're more brawlier here, or far flank if you're flank here, and that's pretty much it. Not a whole lot to say there. Uh, pathing for flanking, like I said, from spawn, uh, if you're fighting on the right side, you're going to lean this side. If you're fighting on the left side, you're going to do this. And from here, you can actually leave your spawn doors, where are we at here? Here, and go straight to point this way. See this? And then from here, you're going to wrap this way. Actually, chat, maybe it's not even faster. Um, but yeah, yeah, we got right to here, right to here. Yeah, that is faster. So you're going to go that way. Um, this map is freaking massive like the previous one. Now, this is the new, the forward respawn. So this, if the back left point is unlocked or the back right point is unlocked, this is going to be your new respawn and vice versa for the opposite sides. Please enjoy these tasty pastries. Okay. There's a mega health pack right here. This is the one that I always get caught on, right? Uh, you know, where uh, where people, uh, you know, I'm always like, I'm gonna go spawn camp somebody and then this point over here unlocks then I get killed by this respawn. So just keep that in mind. Um, in terms of details near the spawn room, there is a mega over here. If you're playing in this point, it's worth a note. There's the mega health pack here. That's close to the respawn. Um, there's an entirely almost worthless flank that comes through here, mini health pack here. Uh, and then as you path towards this point, which we'll talk about first, uh, there is this door frame. There's a mini health pack here. Um, there's also a wraparound section with another mini health pack. And then that continues because around the back left of point is another mini health pack. So <laughs> lots of mini health packs on the periphery as you approach this point, And it's kind of mirrored on the opposite side. Before we talk about that, let's talk about this point. So this is what I like to call like the more uh, the more choky uh, of the points um, because even though this one the point itself is relatively open to get to the point is a pretty nasty choke no matter what way you go. Please, please, please do not push this choke if you are attacking this point. This is a nasty, nasty, nasty choke. It is almost always better to go from main here with an angle here or to go from main here with an angle here and obviously mirrored on the opposite side. So, you know, push here. You do not really want to push through this choke. This choke is absolutely gnarly. Even as a flanker, it can be a bit tricky because you're thinking, oh, this is a good angle. I can I can flank. But what ends up happening is you get shot once, you're like, crap. So not a good sight line. This is a nasty, nasty, nasty choke point. So uh, opposite side, like I said, this area of the map is incredibly important and underutilized. Uh, if there's a fight on point, taking an off angle here as a DPS, as a tank, as a support is really, really powerful. Put out a lot of pressure. It's very safe. There's a mini health back. There's cover. The only thing you need to be aware of is obviously if the enemy team takes that flank. So if you're like just being chilling, you could get flanked from here. So be very careful. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's mostly it for this point. Let's enjoy these beautiful fountains um, that are not currently functional. Uh, and yeah, uh, that's mostly it. There is a back path to the other thing. That is, there's a mini over here. But again, like this area of the map, probably not going to be as utilized as much. Mini health pack. Nope, that's just a light. 
nothing in here. Yeah, this, 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 these little pathways here, hallways are not particularly useful. So anyway, long story short, uh, most people, if you're defending, will be fighting on point here. I think fighting on point is pretty good. You can have your tank control the point, DPS control and offing all support here. Again, another one of the situations where you, you generally want to be fighting on point. Sometimes it is okay on this point to push up and fight here because these are some pretty nasty chokes here as well. So if you're controlling point, it's okay to fight out here because uh, this area is pretty good for defenders as well. And there's a pretty nice mini health back too. This is the one where everyone gets lost. I mean, I'm just double checking here, but yeah, the, the only way to get to this next point is to go through this choke. You cannot wrap this way. There this goes nowhere. So you need to go through here, mini health pack. This way, however, works. And this mini health pack is really important because this mini health pack also leads you to a similar situation where it's a deep coast side flank. And I like to think of this one as the more open point, as you can see. So go around far left. Here's your mini. Um, and then you got a nice little push on point. Now on this one, this one's a bit trickier because the point is a little bit more open. It can be good to fight on point, but because it's so open, there's not as much of an advantage to fighting here. In addition, this rotation to this back high ground is a lot more awkward than it is in the previous point. So it's good to control here, but you'll also see teams more often looking forward to fight forward here just because the, these are easier chokes to control. Um, it's not bad to fight on point, but it's it's not as good as it does in other points. Now, uh, mini health pack over here. Mini health back over here. This is a staircase that goes back to the original first point. Um, not as useful to know. Uh, this mini health pack in there is good too. This high ground is fairly useful. But yeah, you're going to see a lot of people holding off of point on this point because it's just a little bit more open. Uh, there are some good boop spots. This is an environmental kill. Uh, it doesn't look like an environmental kill, but it is because you can obviously tell by the very clearly... This is water, guys. This is not blue sludge. Um, you, it's obviously a lot of kill... of opportunity there. And even if the fights tend to boil out here, you will see environmental kills off into this much more realistic looking water off the side. Can we just admire how beautiful this is? This is just freaking gorgeous. I mean, look at this, guys. Look at this. It's, just, it's beautiful. Okay. Um, yeah, that's mostly it for here. Mini, good to know. And I think that's mostly it. This kind of stuff over here, not as useful to know. There is a mega here. You're going to notice about Suravasa. Uh, at least I am, is that the mega health packs are in a few set spots, kind of towards the middle. One, two, and then you're going to have three over here, and then four ooh, over here. But there are not many, many, <laughs> many health packs. Does anyone know if there's a mega over here? I don't think there's a mega over here. I don't think there's a mega over here. On this point or the previous point? Just something to be aware of, especially if, as a wrecking ball player, something that's going to be relying uh, on more on the health packs. Okay, so let's let's keep doing our uh, wrapping around here. Again, worth noting again that this air part of the map is here. It's not particularly relevant, but it's there. Uh, you know, there is a mega on the way to the rotation here. You can go all the way around the back staircase. There's a mini health pack over here, but again, it's just not areas of the map that you're going to be fighting on. Time. Many here. This does allow you to wrap on the point, and this is where the fights start. So, this point. Again, a little bit more congested. You're noticing them in Suravasa, a lot of chokes. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of chokes. So, key thing with this point is fighting on point here is okay. The, the chokes here are pretty decent. You don't necessarily need to push up. I might push up if I have good range damage here, if I control the point. But generally, just fighting on point here is okay. Um, now, flankers, you're going to have a hard time here. Because flankers have to do one two things. You either have to wrap all the way around to the enemy spawn and wrap around from behind here, which isn't too bad if you can get here because there is a mini health back here. Uh, and, and this is decent for flankers. However, the bad news is that your other alternative is sucky. It is this staircase, which is a nasty choke no matter what way you cut it. Ladies and gentlemen, please do not attack the point from this staircase. Please do not attack the point from the staircase. This is a nasty choke. It doesn't matter if you're playing a brawl, spam, dive. I don't care. This is just not a very good retake option. It feels terrible. It's terrible, 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 terrible. Do not do this. Um, always better to either rotate this way and assault from this way or to go up the staircase, not quite as optimal, but it's there as well. And the same thing goes in the mirrored side. It's generally better for most teams to rotate through here, through the door frames, and then push the point from here. And again, playing corner cover, all that kind of stuff. Um, if you see somebody pushing the rotation here, you honestly don't even need to push them. This, this position for their back line is so dangerous, so out in the open that you can honestly just stand there and shoot. There's not a whole lot that you need to do here. Uh, worth noting, there is a mini health back. Please be aware of the environmental uh, concerns here, not just about dropping your body into the uh, into the, 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 
sluice, but also because if you fall in, you're polluting the water, guys. Come on, think think, think outside the box. You get what I'm saying? Uh, but yeah, mini health pack here, flanks, all that kind of stuff. Not a whole lot to say here. Uh, there are some alternate pathing routes here. Uh, this room right here, for example, uh, can be useful when retaking space if you're trying to be sneaky. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's pretty straightforward point. There is a mega here as well. Um, that is the mega that we referred to in the first point. Uh, but yeah, that's mostly it. Now we're going to go and snowball off of that onto the next point because here's a little shortcut here. Mini health pack, wrap around. And this is our mega. Uh, da -da 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 Not that relevant unless you're playing, you know, Wrecking Ball. Uh, can be relevant if you're playing like a Sombra sometimes. But yeah, this is a mega health pack here. It's the only mega health pack, I think, on the periphery on this map. Anyway, I think. Uh, yeah, anyway, so point here is one of the more brawl unfriendly points in this map. Uh, it's not bad for brawl because there are some decent chokes, but there are a lot of angles to attack from. Uh, all these little hallways and door frames are relatively accessible, not to mention the high ground up top. So this is one of the more spam friendly points on this map compared to some of the other points. And yeah, you can essentially fight on point here if you'd like it. But the most important thing, if you can, is to put somebody or something or even everybody if you can and fight for this high ground. Because if you drop somebody to point once you have high ground control, you have a really easy time supporting, healing, and damaging the enemy team. Now, if you do not or cannot control high ground or you get beat out there, you do have other opportunities. You can go through these door frames here with mini health packs and take angles here. And the same thing is mirrored on the opposite side. Uh, mini health pack again, and you can wrap and shoot from this high ground too. Heck, you can even go on the low ground here, which has a mega nearby, right? And then you can shoot from point here. Not optimal, but it's okay. Now, I think fighting on point here is okay because if you're able to control this high ground, it's freaking amazing. So you don't necessarily, you will see teams fighting out towards here sometimes. This is okay. You will also see teams fighting out towards here sometimes. And I think that's okay too. But there's also nothing wrong with fighting on point if you can control high ground or one of these little ledges here. Uh, last little tidbits here. There is a mini health pack over here. Uh, there are going to be deep flanks all the way to the spawn here that are not very relevant. However, if the enemy team is, let's say, aggressively pushing and holding your team here, that's when you, if you're coming from this spawn here, you can do a little sneaky here, play the health back and sneak them up on there. And then also, you can do the same thing on the other side. Say you're playing a flanker, your team is getting spawn held, you can wrap all the way around left and pressure point or pressure them from behind. Um, be aware that these are pretty nasty sight lines. So if you're trying to retake space here, please do not walk out in the open if you're being shot. Hug the walls on either side. And the same thing goes to the opposite side where it's really, really, really easy to get spammed if you're trying to push uphill out in the open. Um, so just make sure to hug those walls. And that's pretty much it for the map, I think, guys.